Hello, I'm up here, Extra Cat, and you are about to watch the weirdest world record that Minecraft has ever had. This is because when 1.12 first came out, with all of the glitches and tool assists in the world, it could be beaten in 95 seconds, but a human player just did it this week in under 60. This breaks the last minute barrier that Minecraft will ever have with a 56 second world record, but why is it so weird? I think I have to skip the like and subscribe and just show you the full run right now, uh, and then we can explain it later because it is very strange. With that said, as you can see, he spawns an extreme hells before breaking down. Fairly normal stuff as you can see, except it's not normal stuff because it's right above a stronghold. Immediately they get an iron pickaxe, which isn't too abnormal, but what is, is when they get a creeper to blow up a skeleton, which leaves them with an arrow, gunpowder, bow, iron bar, and bone. These are required for the actual strategy used, and to show you that, here is the end, and I'll give you a break from my talking so you can see it by itself. Did the dragon just die in one hit? Yes, she did. And in fact, Minecraft is so confused that she has to fly back to her perch to officially die because that is how the death animation works. And that leaves a great end portal opening up for Hanabi to jump into, beating Minecraft in 56.886 seconds, which is a world record and the first ever time anyone has beaten the game in less than a minute. This is an even wilder thing to say because I'm sure when you looked at the run, you noticed all sorts of minor mistakes like placing a dirt block in front of themselves when going into the end portal. This run could have been a full half second faster and that's what makes this really exciting, but how are any of these runs possible? The simple answer are two separate pieces of behavior that have finally been merged after years of theorizing because the ender dragon has a tiny piece of geometry on her which is 0.02 meters by 0.02 meters or 2 centimeters by 2 centimeters, so small that you would struggle to line up a shot with that if you were trying to mine it with a pickaxe, but instead it is a mob that is moving and you have to shoot a arrow at exactly the right time. Why do you have to shoot an arrow at that spot to kill the dragon? Well simply put, the game actually takes the arrow's momentum to work out the damage from it and it doesn't have a cap. You might hear that a bow does between a half heart and five and a half hearts of damage based on how long you draw it back and whether you get a critical, but this is actually something the game has no cap for. The more momentum an arrow has, the more damage it does, indeed going all the way up to the ender dragon's health bar, which is much much, much higher than 11. How do you get an arrow going so fast that it can deal 200 damage? It might seem impossible, but because of a bug fix, which has a minor accident inside of it, it's actually not. So when the Elytra was first added to the game, you used to be able to fire an arrow and it would hit you in the back because you would travel faster than the arrows. This was not intentional behavior, but it was used for some really cool punch arrow shenanigans. But this exact behavior is why they had to make it so that your momentum was added to the arrows to make a total momentum off it. This is a really cool feature that allows you to shoot while flying with an Elytra, but it also means if you are knocked at insane speeds, you are able to carry this speed forward into your arrows. If you think through the entirety of Minecraft to work out when you are knocked at the highest rate, it would have to be the Java Edition Dragon, right? That thing knocks you insanely high into the air, and it does so with insane momentum, but specifically when you hit this one particular spot inside of her. The community has called this the Tickle Spot for a while, which I just really love as a name, but if you were able to get yourself into that tickle spot, then your momentum would go up drastically, and if you could fire that shot before the dragon flung you, then you would be able to kill the dragon in one hit. For an extra little bit of sweetening on the deal, you would not be flung by the dragon because your momentum does not apply to you, the player, until you take the damage, which means there is that very tiny little brief window where you can attack the dragon and murder her, where she will not be able to then shoot you flying over the edge of the end. This is something that was considered to be a theory, but even for tool assistance speed runs, it was near impossible to actually pull off. Here is the first example I can find in 37 seconds of Circuit going all the way up to the end towers and even playing at 100 times less speed and then speeding up to get this video, you can see just how precise you have to be and why this was considered next when possible by everyone, especially Hanabi.
But what if it wasn't? Imagine you heard these insane low odds and you thought to yourself you could try this again and again thousands of times just hoping that it might pay off. That is precisely what happened and after it was proven that a real human could do this, the community started to work together to work out the dragon's movement patterns so that the most likely places that the dragon would be so that you could place yourself inside of her tickle spot were created by the community. And once these were put together and runners like Hanabi had enough time to really learn the most likely spots, something that was a one in a billion chance or a one in a million chance becomes much more like a one in a hundred. You're not going to pull it off every time or even most times, but every now and then you just might do it, which means then it becomes about optimizing that particular thing. This is where the run gets really wild because if you want to do one of these tickle spot kills on the dragon, the one hit tickle, if you will, then what you're going to need is a bow and arrow. Getting a bow and arrow is definitely doable, but doing it in less than 60 seconds is where the odds start to come in. And this is why this is such an insane run to watch and why it doesn't matter that there is a tiny mistake because a skeleton has a 66% chance of dropping arrows of some number and also has an 8.5% chance, on Java at least, of dropping a bow, meaning what you're hoping for is these two odds to overlap with each other, meaning you have about a 5.6% chance of getting both of these prerequisites if you can find a skeleton which isn't guaranteed and is even less likely still. Something that could be worked down to a 1 in 100 chance becomes a 1 in 5,000 chance becomes even less than that and all of that has to be done while getting enough blocks that you can actually pull off the tickle KO and that has to be done while getting into the end in less than 30 seconds. This brings us into why they are playing 1.12 and this is no coincidence 1.12 is the fastest version of the game to access the end on because there is a seed which you'll notice is used on all sorts of weird speed runs like the you need a mint category which does the exact same thing of spawning above a stronghold which you can break yourself down into killing a rare mob to get their drop then going into the end portal and getting the achievement for one of the more niche world records but why does the overall minecraft world record require this let me show you what's so special about this seed because this seed is the thing that ties everything else together and let me show you what it looks like when you spawn. You are just a few seconds away from being able to break down just four blocks by the way and get yourself straight into a stronghold. You can save yourself from that extreme fall by using the cobwebs which it looks like gravel has already partially started doing and once you're in here you could get enchanted books but no 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 instead we're just here to get the most important things an iron pickaxe. You get iron armor but again we're talking about valuable milliseconds that you can't be wasting. It used to be thought that that it was important to get iron swords which are found just over here but even that small journey from here to there is just not considered worthwhile and so instead people jump straight down over to here which is the fastest route to the end portal. Then you pray you find a skeleton along the way and you can kill him with the pickaxe or if you're incredibly lucky like Hanabi was then all you have to do is get the creeper to kill the skeleton and wait for that 5.6% chance then go into the end and again the incredible thing about this is if you have the right render distance settings which is what you'll always notice, um, then you'll be able to make sure the dragon is about to fly towards you, which means then all you need to do is pull off that one in a hundred chance. And yes, having a seed where uh, something that is uh, like beating the ender dragon is just a one in 5,000 chance. If that one in 5,000 chance leads to an insane run is in totally worth it, which is why now I present to you the run with all of that context. Such a graceful fool here, managing to catch the cobwebs by enough to prevent the fool, but not enough to slow them down. Having a creeper right here explode at just the right distance to kill the other creeper while also killing the skeleton. Having a random dirt block, okay, not perfect, but still everything's fine. Having low cats on the menu, also very weird, but not related to the run. And now you can see all of these, uh, what looks like unoptimized moments and weirdness are actually absolutely required. Having these free endstone blocks is a requirement if he's going to pull this off. And at this point, even though the most insane things happen in the overworld, this isn't a guaranteed lock-in yet. Nothing is guaranteed for sure until what is a about to happen. You've got to pause, you've got to mentally prepare yourself, and you've got to see for sure, is this really going to happen? And you want to hope that it is, and all of a sudden, actually, it has. After gracefully saving themselves from the fall, all they have to do is make it to the end portal now, and they have the first ever one minute or less beating of Minecraft, something which is wild and to say, and was unthinkable just a short while ago. Good job to Hanabi, has to be said, will go down in the history books for the first sub one minute, if it's 
verified by speedrun that is. Uh, but the important thing to finish this video with is the crazy skill of the Minecraft community and the knowledge we pick up about this game even years later. This glitch was known about for years but being made possible has only happened in the last month or so. What are we going to find out about this game that we don't know yet? That is the incredible question that I'm excited to ask myself and all of you and I look forward to seeing how that does play out both for Java but also for the Bedrock Edition which I cover a lot here on this channel. Consider subscribing if you want to see more Minecraft weird things because I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.